Here we are, keeping the ball on the ground. What a lineup we've got today. Three tremendous young men. Yes, we've got absolutely. Kevin Kell, Paul Slane, and the Gow Dog. Paul McGowan, what's happening? Ah, good, mate. Good. All Gre good. Great to have him on, huh? Great to meet him. I'm a wee bit uh, nervous here, Sai, because when I first uh, went to Celtic, Gows, I was all over me. Si. Was he start uh, to finish. What, is he the start he of your problems? Uh, si, si, he was the one that started. I remember my first game away to Queen of the South. Um, I gave the ball away six times in a row, <laughs> and every pass I gave away, Gows, I was on me. So I finally bit Sai and went for him, and it was the last thing I should have done. Gows, I won it. Was what he frustrating, Gows? Yeah, he was. How come? Was. Just so horny on the pitch side, it's hard for guys to cope with that because I can see he was horny as well and it was difficult to tell. He was very nervous. But Wasn't he nervous at all? Don't tell <laughs> I think I'm a guy who's like, Kev, how are you, mate? All right? I mean, I'm good. How's I'm, the taxi game slower? Eh? Ah, it's slower than the, me on the pitch. Slower than your metabolism? <laughs> I, no, it's horrendous. So I think I'll, uh, I'll maybe look to take the car off the road this week. Yeah. And, uh, nah, everyone's just quiet. Wife's still at work, which is a fucking shock. the video out in the back garden. What was she doing? Did I the rebound down there. Rebound, she got the rebound board. Oh, I've never Super seen that, no. Brilliant, Lynn, well done. Keeping the... Nah, and she, was, she never told me that. She was so... Uh, <coughs> no, but no. It is what it is, Si. We're in a difficult time, but here we are. Obviously, hopefully, trying to entertain the nation. nation. And, uh, Slaney, you were obviously in isolation. Were you making sure you were sanitising Paul Tim's trotters? <laughs> me and Paul Tim have been sanitising his big trunk non-stop, Si. <laughs> and uh, it's been a very difficult time for the, 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 the Paul Tim. <laughs> but uh, did he not run out of... Uh, he ran out of food, didn't he? So he's on the Herbalife for Lee He's on Herbalife for Lee Mayor, si, And uh, for some reason, the Herbalife is making him f bigger. And uh, si, that's difficult to deal with. <laughs> Certainly, it's difficult. But what the hell? I got a message for Lee Mayor the other day. He got a video <laughs> call. <laughs> Did he actually? I swear. What I was he giving it? I got a, I got a private man laughing years ago when I retired. All right, big man, Lee Mayor here. Um, gives a wee message. I might have something that could help you. And I says, What is it, Lee? You ever heard of hell of a life? I went, no the day, mate. No the day. No the day. He's the only guy that's lost weight and he's first touch taking hell of a life, huh? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> nah. You're what about the hell, Si? Oh my God, Tommy Shelby. I mean, John Joe Shelby. <laughs> <laughs> Who done that, young man? Myself, Si. I done it myself the other day, mate. I just, I was going to go for the full lot, Si. Shaved it all off. I just went for the sides, I look quite good, eh? Nah, you do look trendy. I look quite sexy, mate. I've been putting myself down a lot, but I feel my confidence is back, Si, and I won't date any good. longer. Good. Any challenges for this man today? Well, Gowser was a fitness fanatic, Si, an animal, some may say, and uh, so <laughs> I, will, I will challenge him later on, Si, when the show gets uh, on, on its feet. But see, all this self-isolation, you'll be used to it with being in the jail, and that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is not yeah. the first time you've met. <laughs> you, you got him a top sign, didn't you? Yeah. See, when he gave you his top, did you think it was a flag at first? <laughs> <laughs> no. I got a top I got, I got a top half of you didn't I ah, put who, it was it? who was it who asked me for a Dundee top there's not many people would ask you for a Dundee oh, top that man sort of jutted didn't he he did he sort of nice I actually guy, just yeah. forgot all about that guys but thanks very much no. Sai actually is he's honestly Sai on the pitch Sai it's the screwball I wish I was the, the, that person and that guy on the pitch an animal who wanted the boy Sai loud I was a quiet mouse on the pitch Sai and after the pitch Sai I was a two-faced bitch do you know what I mean Sai <laughs> So that's why I wish I was a bit more like Paul McGowan. Uh, but just a wee quick message to everyone to stay safe. Stay safe, we're going to get through this side and um, we'll see you out in the brighter side, Si. And Kev, you're staying safe, you're even back on the XL Johnny's. <laughs> Good on you, big man. Good. Go to stay oh, safe, stay Kevin. Safe, you're stay right. safe, aye. It's hard to find the double XL Johnny's, but uh, <laughs> I got some. Uh, but no, everybody's got to stay safe. You've got to look after yourself first and foremost and your surrounding family, but the older ones, obviously, let's have a wee... I we think, you know what I mean? There's too many people not taking this too serious. Um, <clears> and they really need a fucking wake up call because it's, it is serious. Uh -huh. You're yeah. right, Kev. Honestly, the, the, the older ones, Si, they, they, they've been there for us through the war to support our lives now, Si. And uh, we must give it back now. Well said, young man. Uh, guys, uh, how's life with well, football? Have you got a, a programme or not? Yeah. You've been there? Programme Monday. No. Surprisingly, I have. Have you, mate? Huh? Yeah. What, what's in it? Oh shite, but <laughs> 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 no, nah, but I need to keep taking over because I carry a heavy bit of weight. Me bit of weight, and to be fair, the manager, ja you know, Jazz, he's he's quite big on fitness. Which mm. do you like him? No. Jazz. Don't, like jazz don't think he's oh, a manager, Sai. Si. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. No, I'm not really joking. I, <laughs> I, I thought you were going to come along with me, but no, he's a great guy. He's a great coach, a great manager, actually. Nah, How's he doing, alright? Nah, he's doing well, considering. I've been up down at the start of the season. We started going to run there, and obviously, what's happened's happened. So, I don't know. 
What do you think will happen, Kev? Do you think the season will just get void or what? Do you think the people who are in the positions that are all go up? I quite like the English approach to it so far. The fact that they're going to try and drag it out as long as they can to see if they can finish it, whereas we're not getting anything. Nobody's really saying anything. It's just all rumours and it's a bit of strife. But I think I, I, I think there needs I think there needs to be some sort of way that they reward the teams that are miles ahead for winning. Yeah. But at the same time, don't punish teams because by punishing anybody in this environment, it's going to be a long term effect. So can we possibly? I said last week. Bring maybe four teams up for the championship, make it a, a 16 league team and just play each other twice next year so that we catch up. No. Or And do the same with each league. <clears> so bring four teams up each league and then even the, the Lowland League or the Highland League that has that step into the, the third division, bring four up and then the season after that, have a bigger relegation battle. Yeah. It might actually bring a bit of excitement. Yeah. Celtic and Rangers playing each other once home and away over the Listen course of the season. Yeah, because they're third in the league. No, but I... Yeah. I I, agree. I don't think the season's going to finish. Nah. The, way it, the way it's going, it looks like it's just only going to get worse. Listen, Dundee United are far ahead. They, sh- rightly so, should go up. I think so, huh? I think they should, uh-huh. I agree, mate. So you can promote the can, United, uh, you can argue the case of Celtic having a title, but Celtic, how many points are they clear? About 13 nah, I, I think you can right, argue so with as well. You can, of course you can, because Rangers have got to play them twice, and they've got, Rangers have got a game in hand. So say that, that they win the game in hand, two games, that's nine points, it's a four-point gap. Two draws, it's a defeat. You know what yeah, I mean? No, but that's that's a lot of ifs and buts, isn't it? I know, I know, but this is the whole thing. It's a it's an ifs and buts scenario. Yeah. Whereas, if you give um, the likes of Part no Partick, um, Wraith Rovers and Falkirk in League One, they're only like separated by two points. Cove, they're kind of running away with it in the third division. Whereas the likes of maybe the only one that really sticks out that can get relegated, is, I don't like to say, Stranra. They're miles away. Mm-hmm. But where it's like a heart sitting around Hamilton have all got games that can keep them in okay, the league. I think, I think that if it, I've when, heard your opinion on this. No, actually, so it's quite, a good opinion. Si, to... when it's, um, if it's safe, I think they've got to play it behind closed doors. Si. I believe Scottish football should have done that 10 years ago behind closed doors. Right, si. Especially when you, you were playing. Mean? Especially when I was playing. It should have been behind closed doors. Si. And it would be a good advert for the football. If it works behind closed doors, just keep it that way. <laughs> Scottish football, si. I believe so. <laughs> 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 oh, bro, wait. Right, <clears throat> see what happens, eh? Ah. Anyways. What about you, Si? Peter Head? Well, we're safe, <clears throat> man. I told you we had a staying up party last week. <laughs> we're buzzing, we've stayed I know, up. but what about the, the implications long term of the club? I Is we... it going to be a struggle? I think so, mate. I think right. we're going to need to take a wee, maybe an eight, only get 80% of your wages. Something's better than Which nothing. Which club has been great for us, mate, so I would, I would be more than happy to do it, but obviously other boys who don't have any source of income. I think that's the case in, in all football clubs right now. Football comes relevant, second to all this, what's happening in the world, but players need to look at their financial situation and think, right, regardless of whether I take an 80% cut or 50% cut, take some sort of cut to help your club because sometimes they'll maybe help you again, but something into the household is better than nothing. Correct, but the PFA message does as well, saying they're sucking in the contracts where if something like this happens, they don't need to pay you. Oh, really? Aye. So uh, is that clause in it? I've seen that. There's a clause in it, and the PFA are taking up the lawyers just now, and obviously, well, the clubs do take that up. I don't know. I'm just a believer that when you're playing football, sometimes you become too selfish about things because it is an easier life than most. Especially him. But in this situation, there's a lot of people out there losing their jobs. So football players, if somebody says to them, look, we're going to put you into minimum wage for the next year or two of your contract, minimum wage is a hell of a lot more than some people, like myself, self-employed, don't get a penny. I you tell you, man, I mean? who so... not to take too many cuts is him because he's not got many cuts left with. <laughs> Calling it from Arsenal. <laughs> Calling it from Arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bro. Right, we're going to talk about Gowser's career. Uh, what superb, a career it's been, young superb, man. Mate. Back in the youth team, Gowser. Me and you, dog, in the college classes. They were the best, best yeah. days, aren't they? It's not like that anymore. No. Are the young boys' I, name, <clears> personality now? <throat> nah. No way. When I went to Dundee, I felt like it was like. Even you, when we went in, like, it's nothing about them anymore. Nah. But obviously. I was growing up together, coming through, dog in college, I think that sets you good stead, I think. You need to hear a bit about you if you're going to go and have a good career. Personally. Nah, personally, I think, you know, you're going to meet people, you're going to take knocks all the way in life, and that's how you deal with them, and I've had plenty. You were a screwball though, weren't you, as a kid? Nah, but, <laughs> no, now you're not, but when you were a yeah, kid, you were, I, you were wild. I was, I, I, I was and But we were all wild as well, innit? Like we'd all you'd have been wild as well. I've right? done I think wild, wasn't it? Uh-huh. I've done things that you know I'm no proud of in my my career and by luck that managers and clubs have stood by me that you know, I've 
I've owed them a lot and listen, if I could change, I, I'd change it in a heartbeat, but mm. you know, I've done it, you know, I've paid the price for it and you know, especially let my family down more than anyone because it's no nice waking up in a cell and you're like, <clears throat> go straight up to court, come out, I can remember it for this day, they ended up trying to keep me in, but I got out. I went into my, my mum's back, my mum's room crying. I was like, oh, jeez, man, like, phone your manager, phone Paul. Oh, he's, like, ah, he's like, ah, I'll see you in the morning, hung up. End up, Jazz took me up the next day and just says, look, just tell him everything. I just said, look, heads away. I just, I'm not enjoying it. And to be fair to the club, they stood by me and helped me through it. And so I've got a lot of time for Dundee. Time for Dundee. Now you're a die young man. Yeah. Well, uh, six months old? Six months. Aye. Pain in the ass, isn't it? Yeah, I've got an R one. You know, Leo, aye, Leo he's at eleven. So it's tough, aye. Very that? tough. I can't. I, I, like I, I want you to yeah. have a. I want to be a da. I know yeah. I'm taking care of two of the new, aren't I? Be Willie and a biz. That's the same, isn't it? No. Stay there. Are you Willie for Willie? You might be a da. I tell you what, you come back. Come to my house for a week, and I'll soon change your mind, son. Because I've got three of the wildest children you'll ever meet in your life. Wow. At some point in the next two weeks, they'll commit a crime. I'll commit a crime. I'll go back but to jail. See, I just, I just said, heard some cows are saying about we threw my luck. So si, people can make mistakes, right? But see, deep down, you know what type of person they are, say. Si. And this man is a tremendous person, say. Si. He's got a, a heart of gold. When he's talking, to me, I can still hear his voice in my ear, say, si, slotting me for years yeah. ago, and it's hurting me. But away from that side, si, he's, he's a great man, and that's why, say, si, he's been gaining another chance at a go at life. I, I don't want to. Be up his ass either, but see for kids to watch a football player yeah. play, you should watch him. See how hard he works, and mm-hmm. do you know what else is good about him? Always wants the ball, mate. No yeah. matter how bad he's That's playing, what I noticed every week he still wants the ball. Yeah. Time, didn't you? Ah, pe- people got that perception of it. And see that, like, didn't you know you and I'd seen you? Oh, he's in the paper three, three times. You're like, ah, right, come on, there's something got to give. But people don't really know you, who you are, and but if you'd done something and I'd seen it and people like, he's a, a black noise, a great guy, something's obviously happened and so I'm not going to get into what happened to it, but it's like, go to every ground, every away ground and it's like, you're scumbag, you spin the jail, but I'm just like, you can get messes and die, <laughs> you fucking Did you? die. After the derby, Who was that for some, him? no after, <laughs> some we done, was after training session, some we done, the high speed fan wrote to me, saying, I we ain't dying, I've wrote, I, I replied, fuck off virgin, <laughs> and I shouldn't have. <laughs> and I shouldn't have. And then I went back in. And now they can send you messages like, I don't even post anything on. Yeah. And I swear I'd about four. Honestly, just coming up, and oh. I'm like, ah, just so. Right, half yeah. times you think I'll tell you a story that sums him up. The first time I met him, I'd got moved up for the the younger age group to the older age group. So it was his team and meeting everyone. Mikey McGlinchey, <clears> how you doing, mate? I'm Mikey Charlie Grant. I'm Charlie Scott Cuthbert. Scotty. And he comes in and goes. Alright, I'm psycho. <laughs> 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 we were in a home member, member and I am. We oh. went away to Holland or something, right? So our room was wild, mate. Like, mm. now he's coming for it. And uh, remember, I am the physio. Do you know what I am? He's been about everywhere, man. You still line you up, remember? Line you up. Uh, and you're out of place just by looking at you? He did. He go walk up and mate. Come back, you're out of place. I go, shut your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so we're all going mad, right? And Niam comes in our room and turns the lights on and he's like, right, I'm going to sit in here until, until you're uh, all sleeping. He puts the light out about five minutes in, he's like to me, Si, is that mad Miami guy still in here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, bro, what a guy though, I am, isn't it? Oh, bro, they youth team day so much. Who else was, who else was funny? Rocco Quinn, was he, in, was he, he that was team? Older. Rocco. Was he older? Foxy. Foxy, oh, oh, tell, tell the Foxy story, mate. Not a you. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that Foxy? Liam Fox? That's a goalie, no, not a goalie. Fox, the goalie. Oh, the goalie, right. You want to hear it? He's, yeah, not, well, he's not like you, is he? Fox he used to drive us in because we he's stayed in the, Airdrie. I mean, he must have hated you too. I only passed my test can, six months ago, so... I know you kept feeling it when I was a member. <laughs> no, Did that's a lie. lie. That's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait, tell me the time... That's the only time I've done it. Nah, I can't remember. Tell me the time you got chased through Barfield. Oh, yeah. We go to our kit for certain you you got all the... The heaviest, the, training bag the, world, the heaviest bag ever, just done a double session. So I'm walking along London Road to cut up to go to the train station. And these like four guys are shouting here and me just been a wee mouth is like, fuck off. Next thing they started chasing me. So I like kept running, so I'm running away with this bag and I just done a fuck, I'm never getting away. I'm not the quickest any. 
cuddled up with my bag so I start trying to grab my bag kick me in the back of the head <laughs> That's me just finished training and I'm getting wet up. He punched back. So this guy, funny enough, was just walking. He's like, oh, leave my lane, leave my lane. Took me into his house and then dropped me off at the train station. And that was the last time I got to train. Mate, wow, see, once oh, we played five a sides up at uh, uh, De uh, Deniston, what's it called? The, the Leisure Centre, remember this? Oh, aye. We played five a sides and William McStay made the losing team run him, <laughs> right? And it was when it was snowing. And John McGeeck, remember John McGeeck? No. Oh, Mate, the scheme team have actually started chasing us, right? And John McGeeck ended up getting a doing. And then Wally was panicking. Hey, hey, don't tell anyone. Tell me this. <laughs> did, he, did he know how to jump at the minibus? I didn't help him. I helped him fight the scheme, oh, man. Oh, right, did you do stuff like that when you saw No, I was Motherwell, but I don't know if there was a... You're from Motherwell, weren't you? No. Airdre. Airdre. I don't know if there's the same. Like, do, uh, Barryfield side. It's proper being heads, isn't there? Uh -huh. But Motherwell, I don't, I don't know if they're... Didn't he get there. I don't you know, mate. Jamie Pollock's team? No, I was older than him and, and much better. Talking to Cuba, who's your dad? Me, Jerry. He's got that. he gets caught? <laughs> no, he just calls him that. <laughs> <laughs> How's he got it? Ah, he's good. Yeah, he's got it the pub shut. So ah, the board seat. Loves Sunday sesh. Um, what was, I was going to ask you something there. Did you know what, uh, a guy in Glasgow with a toilet bag as hell? Ah, fuck. <laughs> That was self defence. What? Having a to toilet bag? Like, nah, he put his hand in there and he started coming at us. I think somebody had said something to him and he's like, done that and he's lunge at me. We're all shaking and pulling around away, but he's the only one that. I had like a wee FCU. Can you remember the wee FCU UK UK bag? I just hot him out of the head and ran away, but I think he was going into like guts or something. Uh -huh. so. What was this in the tune? We used to, yeah. we used to so finish training, mate, and go straight in the tune for food and all. Oh, we used to hang about together. Really Listen, I, I don't like fighting that. I, that's no... No, but all I'm these have been people attacking us, like, <coughs> It's weird, see, when I came into Celtic, you're very close to me with that boy. You're very close. Sandy Wood. No, somebody said you're still, you hang about with me, you stay with him or that. Is it Sean Fitzharris? Do you still speak to him? <laughs> <laughs> Who's Sean Fitzharris? Remember the guy with the white face? Never said a word to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Remember the two boys, Chris Ballers and Caracas? Aye. Oh, yeah. Give me a break, <laughs> wasn't it? Oh, oh that's what you said, didn't it? You came from Motherwell first team to hanging about with Chris Vallers and... <laughs> Mate, I went from Motherwell first team and uh, hanging about with Vallers and Kraken. You, uh, you didn't come out of the... I had did. Oh, you never. I had did. You never. <laughs> I, was I, was first team, I was in the first team changing me, say. It's not a problem for me, mate. <laughs> what did he used to say? I'm too nervous. No, well, I was like, obviously when somebody comes to the club, it's new, you just want to... Terrorise them. Try to make them feel worse. He's sitting down there, like, you want to come up and get a bite to eat and I gave him a pill and I did the pool table and that there and he's like, Nah, I shouldn't be here, I'm not good enough. <laughs> Celtic, <laughs> Celtic, <laughs> Celtic just paid money, money for it. <laughs> 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 you just thought that about yourself as well, too, Kev, didn't you? Didn't think you were good enough for Sunderland? No, I didn't either, I was fucking that. I used to just, I swear to God, the amount of days I'd go into the change room and just sit there and like, oh, fuck, why am I here? I can't even fucking do a keep ball session with 10 people and two in the middle. I was in the middle constantly. I had a season ticket for the middle of the box. And then the boys would put the arm and say, oh, I didn't want a big man, it'll come, it'll come. And I'm like, what, what's going to come? Where's it coming to? He says, just keep doing it simple. And I thought, <coughs> nah, I can't fucking do this. And I, 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 it's just a confidence thing. It's like, you either, like me, you overcome it, or you're like slain and you just fucking... Buckle. <laughs> Full like that again. <laughs> Full like a take of care. We were the opposite, man. We were also we were also confident, eh? I was to be fair, I, see Mullow, I say I was so so confident. I was uh, as I say before, I was so arrogant towards first team players, say. But when I went to Celtic side, I went through a wee injury and ever since the inside my confidence went, mm -hmm. I just couldn't get it back. Don't know what it was, mate. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that as well when you oh, came well, back from injuries? Injured. You ever had that? To be honest, I've I've more really had a bad injury. I'd, Two of my shoulders done, that's been that. Because I used to be such a. But I, I could understand, like, when you see people doing the gym, you know what Dundee gym's like, uh -huh. doing that wee. That's a dungeon, mate. Oh my it? god. It's like, I mean, so what, you imagine doing there for six months, it, pff, it would affect you. Uh -huh. uh, what about uh, youth team coaches, Willie McStay? You used to terrorise him. Yeah. Willie was. <laughs> great guy, is he? Great, great guy. guy. Like, he, Willie actually done a lot uh -huh. for, for us. us. Do you uh -huh. know what I mean? Like, looking back now, we didn't appreciate him. No. I, I don't think. I didn't. Certainly, because you're just young, stupid, and too much carry on your head. But looking back, he was a great guy, and you know he done a lot for us. And to be fair, our team, you know, we won the double. We had a great team, and you know we done well for him too. So he no, was well his love child. You were well his love child. Ah, all the off. coaches loved you in Celtic. Uh, I remember it. You would always come out every time I walked up to lunch. I always seen him coming out the coach's office. What about Tommy? <laughs> Gives it the best, doesn't he? Aye, Tommy was a bit. Insane, it, like, 
Tommy gave me my first contract because when I first set, came in full time, do you remember me and Ribo? You're running expenses, aren't you? Me and Ribo get put in the same time. Like, look, I think we had a injury or something. He's like, look, we don't know yet. We're no saying no. These expenses, uh, we'll see how you go. And to be fair, I think Jim Mac, Jim McNally as well. After three, after two, three months, Tommy Pultis says look, he's getting a contract. So nah, it was a, I think it was an inspiration to all the young ones coming through. And I don't think you'd ever hear a bad word about Tommy. Was that not hard to see when you said we were getting three-year deals <coughs> and you only got offered the expenses? It was, like, chicken, what, what was more, more annoying than not is that players coming over from Ireland getting they were hopeless. Four, four-year deals, big signing on fees. We were, we were going up and getting what. I think it was 90 or 100 pounds. <coughs> a week, I know that's people like that eye, but but these guys were coming over here and you know, looking at them, can, some of them are hopeless. That happened every time. Irish boys always get sorted, yeah, didn't they? The only man that I can remember, actually remember it's actually came and had a great darn the day. Uh, it does. Darn came over and, you know, no, ho- no hopeless. I just right. think they get way more than what the boys coming through got. I don't think that's always. I don't know if that's still the case. <coughs> no, nah, that is. Uh, so Tommy loved that, the Irish boys, didn't he? Yeah, he was trying to get Westlife over, wasn't he? <laughs> he loved them that much. Uh, what about uh, funny stories with Tommy? Remember any? Nah. Remember nah. Rival? Do you know who you're talking about? Rival. Nah, Rival was right when we were younger. Rival wasn't the best looking. Like he was going through a hard time with puberty or something. <laughs> and uh, we were all getting a night out that night, and Tommy pulled us on in in, in, a, in a circle. I'll never forget. Remember it? Yeah. And he went, right, listen, lads, behave yourselves tonight. See if you, see if it's just a drink you're after. Go with Ibo because that's all you'll fucking get. <laughs> <laughs> and then he started calling him Brad after Brad. <laughs> Brad. <laughs> big Matt, big Ibo loved the bottle of buck. Didn't so he <laughs> did, mate. He loved the bottle of buck. Must good Tommy uh, Burn story, Si. Was it was it an unbelievable coach, Si, as well? See when you say unbelievable oh, just, coach, but, just, mate, simple just, just simple stuff. Just simple stuff, but so into it, you join in all the time. Down the front, you'd see him walking down. We'd already be training. The grounds would be up, so I was here, most of the night. night uh-huh. Just carry it on. Didn't want to stop oh, training. Wow. Just that's what I hear about three hours. See what training. youth team mm-hmm. football now, mate. You watch them train the day before a game, right? They do like twenty minutes because I they've got a game. Next. Mm-hmm. See when it was us and Tommy would come down, mate. You'd do like three or sessions yeah. and then play it, play the next day. I think star sports science now it take over. And just, like a day before a game, you hardly do anything. It's like set plays and we should be. We, to be fair, we always we do young v old and that now. It's like kind of be fun day and then it it is like set plays and that's us. But we're only there for forty five fifty minutes. minutes. What about you, team? You were with Ped Dennis, didn't you? How was he? <clears throat> do you know Ped? What's his name? Peter Dennis. Peter Dennis. No, he was an absolute screw. But he was at Celtic as well, by the way. Was he right? So I just absolutely mental. But say. Si, I don't know if he deserves to get spoke about in this show. No, big enough. No, I don't think he's big enough, Si. Certainly don't. Either. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, did you hear a, a boy in the youth team that was just off his nut? Do you know, I, I kind of, n- nobody really ever stuck out like a, as a fucking, we, we got a lot of young Irish kids come over and they didn't appreciate it. Like they were on like, we were, for, we, we were 48, 50 first year and then second year was 70, no, 93, I think up to 93. So when the younger ones came over, see come the end of the week, they were like, they would do fucking anything for 20 quid. And because yeah. we lived in this horse in the seafront, you say, right, Rasher, this boy Keith Graydon, Rasher, he was fucking always skint. We'll all give you a fiver each, right? If you run out into the across the road, take your clays off naked and run out the sea, do three or four links in the, the, the sea, just like, and yeah. then we'll see you through the knockers and come back. He's like, okay. And it was fucking howling, like freezing, minus, and it was the North Sea. And there he goes down the steps, fucking clays come off as he's going along, jumps out of the sea, swims back, he comes back, he's fucking like blue, shaking, <laughs> just for like 20 quid. Oh, <laughs> why, why do you, what, what you got to do with that 20 quid? <laughs> We're fucking in a hostel where you get three meals a day. You don't need to buy anything. What's he wanting 20 quid for? But just, <clears throat> I can't remember too many. Like, there, there was loads, like, loads of. Young guys always try to be the big shot, but they never lasted long. You so know I mean? see when you were packed. coming through, see like Sutton and all that, would, would they do stuff? Mate, they gave him and Midge money to direct right. the dressing room, the, uh, the physio room. No way. No. Did you do it? Yeah. You Tom and Midge, were it? Tom, Tom the, uh, Me and Midge, so me and Midge went in, tipped upside down. And then, who was it? John, what was his name? John Robertson. John Robertson. What was his name? Assistant manager. Shouted his in. <laughs> shouted his in. How did they know it was yours? Tom went and grasped on the money. Tom will tell Tom. <laughs> tell him it was us. Tom went over to Rob and went, by the way, Rob, I think two young lads are wrecking right. the, the physio room. 
weird Sorry. tune. <laughs> uh, I went absolute throughs. I was like, I, I was nearly greeting, man. So we're walking back out, and Tom was like sitting on the bench, like that, head down. And Midge done that. Where's my fucking money? <laughs> I'm not twenty quid. When the first team pro asked you to do something, you felt obliged to do it because yeah. you thought, like. But did you know, Hank, when they when that they liked mm-hmm. you, but when they, uh, uh, do you know what I mean? That, so was, I, that was a big change in room. Oh like, my god, they were like, ruthless, innit? Did you call me Bobby Charlton? Who? Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby Charlton. <laughs> like, see, you take it down and work. Remember, you did the ball boy uh-huh. some games. You're like, ah, why would you even want to train there? Just hammering each other, just. Do you remember the one with Richie Till? Si, I was walking back for the tune and uh, Richie Till said, do you remember us? He was having a coffee with his, I thought it was his bird, right? So the next day, I sort of said, all right to him, all right. So the next day I've come in the changing room saying a bit like to him, sorry mate, I didn't want to uh, come in and talk to you yesterday with your ma, but it was his bird, Si. <laughs> <laughs> so I could not believe it, mate. But Richie Till wasn't he? You didn't really have a joke with him. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? He was quite serious. Yeah, Richie's uh, done very oh, well. Very Honestly, well. Like, for oh, what he was eh? here. Like... I used to think he had pins and needles in his foot. He got into control. He's, He's done, done very well. He v- had, uh, what he had say was belief on himself. Yeah. Very yeah, arrogant, right. say. Confident. Nah, that's what it's all about. Then you went on loan to Morton. Yeah. Was that the, cra- that the craziest group of guys ever? Who was it? Was Miss Jardine there? Did, was Scott McLaughlin there? No. Well, I, obviously at the time when I got told, if it wasn't for Jim Mack, I wouldn't have went. Obviously. Jim McAnally, huh? Him been there, and then I think the first week, now Jim loves his 4-4s, four so it's like the Quarriers Club they train, so it's like, run anywhere, so we're all doing a four minute run, just go anywhere, and then all meet back in at the park, so we're all running, and I'm like, ah, there's somebody standing on the bridge, Dean Keenan, standing on the bridge, taking a shit off the bridge, <laughs> you know, <laughs> might have been doing four, four, four minute runs, he's sitting like that on a bridge, that's Quarriers Club. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like to my dad, I was like, I don't know what I've got into here, man, honestly. But oh it ended up being Who was one the characters of the most, in that team? One of the most enjoyable experience. Scotty. Was Andy McLaren there, no? No, nah, that was just before me, but so it was. Dino. Uh, Did Dino used to play naked table tennis as well? Yeah, he like they'd get they obviously he didn't get one chair and there was rumours get they'd bring a big pot of soup at. And there were rumours that fucking Dino was pissing in it and all that, man. It's like, fucking fuck. <laughs> You're going to get shut down. just rip his t-shirt as well. Rip his t-shirt. She we went away to Newcastle for a Christmas night out. So, we, Michael Midge. No, no Michael Gardner. Uh, Chris Miller. Chris Miller. Oh, he loves it. Looking good and that. So he's come down and he's like, ah, tell you, man, my room was stink of shit last night, man. <laughs> Dino had took a shit under his bed. <laughs> and a travel one. So he made it off to my bed. Oh my fucking God. Have you met him, Kieran? No, somebody mate, actually met him. I swear, <laughs> like, man, one of the loveliest boys you'll ever meet, but I swear, like, fucking. <laughs> somebody messaged me this morning and said, um, when he's getting Dean Keenan on, I was like, oh, I've heard a few stories mate, about him. He, he says, get, get it. He says, he, he would. Uh, if him is, it would it be good to come on? Oh, he's mental. He, uh, Loans, you enjoy it, Martin. Uh, uh, you were on fire, weren't you? Maybe yeah. you took the keeper. Aye. Uh-huh. What was that, Scottish Cup? No, that was. Did I? I think I, I chipped the keeper. I think you did. Nah. I came to watch you a couple of times. I'm sure you chipped the keeper. Ah, the Scottish Wait, Cup. Wait, were you the end Kelly, 19. 19. Is that, that the best a... thing you done as a young nah, kid going on loan? Think... You're at a big club here, Celtic. You've got everything done for you. Kit, best of kit. Boots gave to you, everything you go there, and it's like a reality check. But it was the most, probably the most enjoyable season we had. We won the league, I, I can't. Uh, and Mark wanted chairman? to buy me. Dougie Ray. Oh, Douglas Ray. Aye, aye, aye. Uh, great guy. Uh-huh. Uh, I went and met him. Obviously, I was close to signing because <clears> I think <throat> Celtic were wanting a bit too much money, but they were willing to pay. Went through and met him, and he says, Look, and I said, I'd have went if. The clubs are agreed, but obviously you couldn't come to terms. They agree to terms. You S- so I see, um, see we, that. Would you encourage? It is much better to go out and play a first team, even if it is doing the leagues, than play reserves in it. Oh, much mate. more in it. I would say. Surely, in it, like, no, surely, would you say on same as Selene's question? Would you recommend that I would personally, but all the top clubs send their youth team players out to somewhere like but then, a lower league Scottish club or whatever it is just to experience 
the reality mm. of what football is really Aye. like for the majority. I would say 80% of footballers, maybe higher, because it's only a small percentage actually gets to, to, to witness the great things about football yeah. in terms of being taken care of yeah. and being paid handsomely for it, whereas the majority of footballers are just hard-working, normal yeah. people looking to put a, a bit of food on the table for their families. See, when you're reserves, you're not a football player, eh? No. You're no. not. You tell all your pals are... Pl- you, can be, you, could, you could be brilliant in the game, Sian, and then you go to the and a first team and you, it's, you're just not the same. So that's that's proper football out there. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I, I, the only thing is we're going out and loan. I think when Tony Watt stayed with Celtic that he was about the youth team and then he got his chance because I think there was players injured and all that mm. and he was there, do you know what I mean? So, oh right, there's, there's a chance <clears> of getting in the first team if so you stay uh, there might come a chance that, it, it, however it happens, say you get into the first team because you're there, if you're out and loan, then you're not going to get that chance but for who's, it's not always going to happen is it? I mean, see on loan, the best thing that happened to me on loan was I played the first two games, I got the first, man of the match, my first game for Swindon I thought this is the best man second game I think we beat a big team, done well again <clears throat> and the third game Half time, first 45 minutes having a shocker, mate, and they took us off at half time. And I remember coming in at half time, and the captain, Jonathan Douglas, asked me, You fucking need to get your fucking finger out. And like, see, anywhere else, no. you played too good. Like, if you're in the 20s and you were had one wee bad ah, half, yeah, nothing with a big city, he's like, to me, he's playing second with me, he's like, I'm doing all your fucking work, you better get your finger out now. And then the manager <coughs> took us off, mate, and you're like, This is. This is proper that football, man. Uh-huh. That would set you in good stead, but wouldn't it? Uh, of course it does. It makes you a stronger person as well, does it? Like, it puts them in the shop window and all. If it doesn't work out, we like their clubs are at, and then people yeah. say, ah, maybe he's going to well. sign the guy that played for your nah. reserve games. Nah, exactly. Definitely. You know what I mean? It's, that's just that's just mm-hmm. how football. I went to, I went and loaned to Rochdale. That was my third and final loan spell. Did you Rochdale? What a shit of what is it? Scotland. I oh. swear to God, I played I think three games and then I scored a fucking own goal, <laughs> and that was the fans on me. And I just remember thinking one day, sitting in my car down in a fucking hotel in Sport in Rochdale, thinking, "Oh my God, man, I'm, go- I'm just going to get the manager tomorrow. I'm going to say to him, look, Phil, enough's enough. I'm going back up the fucking road." And uh, I went back up the road, and I just said to the Ricky, I think it was Ricky Spazier, Port Robson, I says, "Look, I'm going to come back here. I'm going to work my fucking nuts off, and I'm going to appreciate everything I've ever had up here." And that's what that's what I did because, as much as I didn't disrespect Rochdale in any way, I just realised that I've got an opportunity that these guys are trying to get to. That was it. I just fucking back up the road and things worked out. But Ricky Spazier not a bit of a madman? Oh, Ricky Spazier was the like the, for me like as a youth team. He he was the scariest man I've ever met. Like when you were in the youth team and you were doing stuff wrong, he was on your fucking case every minute, every day, and you felt like you were you felt you couldn't do it wrong. Mm-hmm. But see, the minute you made the transition out of reserves and started looking like you were going to do it, he was the fucking nicest guy you've ever met. He just he, I remember one day we were told to get the balls in right. So we're doing a shooting drill, get the balls in, so we go behind the... You know when you go and get the balls, you kick them back? So I fucking leathered one, right, and it was freezing cold, and it hit him right in the lug, right? And he just fucking... He didn't even flinch, he just turned around and went, Who the fuck was that? Big Scottish guy, like, Who the fuck? That big Lego head of his, right? It used to call him Lego head. He had fucking shiny black hair, looked like a big Lego head. So he turned around, and I fucking couldn't... I couldn't help it, I just started busting out laughing. Like, Who the fuck do you think you are laughing at me? I went, oh sorry Gaff, I didn't mean it, I says, but what's funny, eh? Get fucking in that gesture and I'll speak to you later on. And that was it, I was just sent in and he never spoke to me that day. Uh-huh. I sat there at the five o'clock and I had to go to the office and say, yeah, can, I go, can I go back to the hostel? It's the last boss is running. <laughs> and he still never even gave me permission to do that and I just I just went to my own accord the next day he came in, you come down here for you know, you ain't your fucking big shot, hitting the fucking gaffer with the fucking boys in the lug and then laughing at me. Well, I'll tell you son, you've got a week. And that was it. But you got a week? I said to me, you got a week. See, if somebody hit me with a boss, I would batter him, eh? <laughs> <laughs> no joke, I mean, I hate that, eh? I like jokes now, but see when somebody crosses that line, Si. What about when them. you were young? What about when Colin Meldrum done you with the, the, <laughs> the manager? Oh, my God. I, was, I, I cleaned the, the manager, Matt McGee, uh, Scott Leach, uh, and Melly's boots, Colin Meldrum. And uh, I cleaned their boots every day. It was my job. Don't be laughing now, please, when I'm talking. <laughs> and so I, I was cleaning the boots. But one day, Gowser, I was in, and uh, I was in to get the boots. But Matt McGee was in the shower, but in the back of the... the big Dingus. Ne- big Dingus was in the shower, but I was never near him. And uh, Colin Mildrum came in, and just stokes and starts staring at us, and shuts the door and says, you watching the gaffer's willy there? <laughs> Gowser, I went like that. I went like that. I said, no, I said, that's my job, I get the boots, not that. He went, you're a willy watcher. <laughs> So that stuck with me for a while, and then I remember, right, Melly was like, Listen, 
don't do that again. If somebody's a coach in the shower, you get out and have a bit of respect. Mm. So anyway, he's like, that's it done. And I walked in the lunch hall and the, all the staff's there and all the players there and all the office ladies are there. I used to sit with the office ladies side and I sit with the players. Of course I did. Of course I did. So I walked by the, all the staff and I just heard a willy watcher. So I said it in front of all the people. So the story got explained to everybody. Si, so that lasted for a wee while. Si, so you can see why I'm a bit fucked up in the brain now. See, si. just on reserve team managers, who was yours at Mother? My reserve team was Chris McCart. Oh, was it Chris? We had a great one as well. Kenny McDill was brilliant, wasn't he? Yeah. Remember Kenny used to make Kenny would cunt you off all the time when you were like 17 moved up to the reserves. Wait, do you mean if you had a bad performance? Uh -huh. No, I just, I remember my debut for the reserves. I was like 17, right? And uh, I think we were winning two none or something, and, and he was like, oh, I don't know worry about it, Sai, you're going on right midfield. He says, just go and enjoy yourself, no pressure. Right next to him. Mate, first ball I gave, I gave it away, he's like, oh, you, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> After just telling us to enjoy it, man. I was actually joining and playing elbow and twins. Elbow you, mate, all the time, didn't he? I was scared of Kenny, Aww. man. Remember, he, um, he slaughtered Cornroy, and Cornroy went to say something back to me, and you've not got a fucking opinion <laughs> at this club. <laughs> Shit, that is. Yeah. Mate, he had boys and Kenny had boys yeah. in tears, but he, again, he was brilliant, man. Like, it's what you needed, wasn't it? Actually, it's not like that anymore. Do you know what I mean? Like, no, it's guys like that, it's like fucking <laughs> join in training, fighting with your, your players, well, but then it? after it, it's like. I'm sure he broke Big Cartan's foot. <laughs> yeah, Stamped man. on his foot, didn't he? We used to fight with Rocco all the time. <laughs> what, oh, mate, him and Rocco had one of the best arguments I've ever <laughs> seen in football, mate. Ro what was Rocco say, Stamps? Rocco I bust my boys every week for you. <laughs> Rocco said that him. <laughs> what was he? Good. Was he raging after me? And Kenny was at him. Oh, fuck off, Rocco. <laughs> oh, cause you, I'm looking at me, Rocco. I should be playing in the oh, for Man United yeah, or not? And Rocco, mate, Rocco just walked in. Oh, <laughs> Didn't they care? Uh, right, first team football. Gordon Stratton. You like him? Aye. Loved Legend. you, didn't he? Yeah. Tell the story, mate. I love this story. <clears throat> see, see if he to hear that story, he'd deny it. That's just the way he is, like, nah, I'll put you in. Because he deserved it. My wee boy, Leo, was premature, the first one, so he was like three, two months premature, he was kept in. And obviously, I was running about the squad at the time. It was never close to playing around, I was just always running about the squad. But we're still in the Champions League, and the bonuses there were a joke, do you know what I mean? Like, even just getting a draw. Even getting in the squad for sitting in the stand, you were still getting X amount of money for, you know, just sitting in the stand if they get a win. And then obviously it came, came out, baby was in hospital and with the game against Villarreal and I was in the squad, put me on the bench. I was like, ah, come on. We were already out at the time, playing 2 0 up at half time, me and me caddy, and the, can remember, me and me caddy were sitting on the bench, like, come on. Warming up at half time, we cards like that. I think we were going, guys. I was like, nah, I'm not even, I wasn't even caring. It was just like that, as long as we win the game. Game. And then, after about 75 minutes, like, guys, get stripped, you're on, put me on. And it's like, after that, it was just like that. I, I said it to my dad, my mum, and I said, yeah, I think you just put me in the, just to, you know, give me money behind me, blah, blah, blah. But if you said that to him, he'd just laugh, nah. It's amazing, but it's like amazing. That. He was good like that, wasn't he? Like, even yeah, when I was injured, he was brilliant. To be fair, like, he'd phone, he's like, who's up at the hospital where you? I was like, ah, at my exit of time, and he's like, ah, me and the wife will come up and see you, but what, our mums and dad and that were in, but just, I like, was a young boy, didn't he? Need to do that, do you know what I mean? That any separates day. the good <laughs> managers for the fucking shit managers, I'll tell you. Yeah. I don't think, I, I genuinely don't think he get the credit he deserved. Aye. You know, I like, went, went he? Like, but then on the, flip, and all that. Uh, on the flip side, mate, he could slaughter you. Yeah, mate. I heard that. Oh. I oh. wouldn't have done me one day a guy like that. But I, I didn't mind him slaughtering me because it was always funny, mm. mate. So you always think, like, he's not. Everybody as... says, Sai, that I spoke to that said that they were not scared him. Again, at that word, but it's like, you're kind of scared of him. I had that, yeah. but I, I fear. Everybody like, says. Seeing you're doing boxes and he's just standing over you and he's like, what are you doing there? See that? Well, that's like, horrible, that, isn't it? That, they both say that. It's like you just try to flick out with the side The thing is, you know when you're that. getting slaughtered by a manager, if you've not getting in about you and you don't understand why you're being slaughtered, there's fucking something wrong. Yeah. Because usually when you get slaughtered, it's for a particular reason. So if you can't fucking grasp that you're being slaughtered because you've been shite or you've made, then there's something fucking wrong with you. But I don't know, just managers that, 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 that him are like yeah. kind of dying... Breed. Dying breed. Like, you know, we're not going to produce the types of managers in 20 years' time. It'll be like, yeah. come here and look at the iPad and I'll show you what we're doing. And then Alexa will fucking tell them what they do. 
Yeah. Alex, I'll give them a bit of trouble. You know what I mean? Fucking <laughs> <laughs> joke. Mate, see, see, a... see what I hate? Like, I hate young players now passing it back all the time. See, he was striking. I remember I was playing a bounce game. Lenny was centre mid one, one team. I was centre mid another team. Lenny gets the ball, bounces it back to the centre half. Striking's like that. Ah, brilliant, Lenny. Ball comes to me. I bounce it back to the centre half. He stops. He's like, ah, why are you so negative? 18 years old, you want to pass the ball back to me? Give the team the other ball, negative play. I'm not just doing the exact same thing. And that he got was a thing, William. He stopped the full training session and what like, explained it, and you're just sitting there like, fucking. Okay, he shouted at you one day for shouting at the first team player, didn't he? <laughs> that was just me. I didn't shout. I wasn't he intentionally shouting. I like, just kept shouting, shouting. He just stopped training. Done. He's a coach. He's a coach. Pointed to somebody. I think it was a goalie coach. He's a coach. You're not a fucking coach. Shut up. <laughs> and that was me for a lot of money. Honestly, I never say, never say the word after it. Oh, my God. Did you ever have an argument with girls in there? Nah. Nah. Too much. Even though I'd say, like, so I'd never, I've never really had a bad what, argument with a manager in all my mm. career. Like, people would be like, that lies. But I've had like, disagreements, but I've never like, had a fallout with a manager or a, Anything like that? Mm. Do you know what? It's, it's actually quite remarkable, to be honest. Are you? <clears throat> oh, say I argued with every manager. Say who, 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 who did you argue with the most? I'll tell you one. We I remember at Motherwell say at Deal Park under 19s. Um, we we're doing a warm up say, and uh, I think I was jogging about say, and Willie Faulkner said to me say, um, "Are you too big to <clears throat> to put your full effort in?" To put what sorry? Like your full effort in? Right. I was just like sort of talking away, and I went like no. I said I was trying, he went, no, you weren't there. So I, I've walked half, sat in the bus, the minibus watching training. So I just walked half, yeah. si, and I'm no joking, floods of tears. Oh, yeah? I, so I just broke down on the bus. That's <laughs> incredible. <laughs> I don't know why I was greeting, si, I, when I walked half, so I, I think I was annoyed that he questioned me for no trying. Mm-hmm. So I've walked half, but see that way, when you commit to something, you're like, I'm going to keep walking here. Yeah. But during that walk, so I was thinking, well, what have I done I here? I wish I could go back. I wish I could walk back, but I couldn't walk back, si, so I burst out greeting, saying, si, expense it off. Were you trying? Nope. Kev, <laughs> <laughs> okay, what about you? Well, just the usual, Billy and Jim, I would always fall out with them. Uh-huh. Uh, what about like, Peter Reid or that? Nah, never. No, nah, I was too fucking scared of Peter Reid. Never a word back? Nah, no. never. Mick Keep... McCarthy, same? Mick, we would hate, we, we would agree to disagree, but it was more down to opinions. Um, Coventry, Ian Dowie, never really needed to argue with him. Mickey Adams would maybe have a wee toe, he would say, I fucking sign you for fucking nearly a million quid, and this is what you're fucking giving me. I'm like, fuck off, Gaffer, I'm no fucking, and just like, just usual shite. Uh-huh. And, uh, but not a big massive one nah, there. I was always conscious of saying the wrong thing, and always was like, oh God, I never ever said what I really wanted to say. But no, nah, I, I never really felt it with too many managers because. I think it helps you because you know you know you know the way the football world works. Whispers go round that all the clubs don't don't fucking sign him. He's a fucking gobshite. Mm. So you've just always got to be careful. But nah, just Billy and Jim, we would argue just there in the moment, heat the moment, and then it would be forgotten about the next day. You'd move on. What about you? Uh, okay, uh, most managers are. Uh, You're quite an angry wee man, aren't you? Uh-huh. Really? Uh-huh. But see, I I think if mm. and I think top managers and good managers, I'd be like that. I think so anyway. Depends how you do it. In the right uh, way. In the, way, uh, in the right way, Sai. Si. Like, like, I chucked it at Dundee at the end, remember? Yeah. I had a couple of arguments. Couple of them. When it used to give you, because Paul Hartley used to give him and Jazz every decision, mate. Him and Jazz would <laughs> be on the same team, mate. And they'd be, the coaches would be lined up there. <laughs> they'd be standing and they'd be the line, and he would run the ball out the line and bring it back in, and they would shout, Plur, and I'd be like, why are you scared of him? He's like, the ball's out. <laughs> Just get it out. Remember that? <laughs> <laughs> that actually would give you and Jazz well, at every decision, though, wouldn't it? Yeah, yes. It was good <laughs> to me, Jazz. <laughs> every morning we'd go and he's like, Jazz, guys, are in the office. <laughs> did he, aye? Aye. Yeah. What did they were the boys, what was we like? Just see what, I, I did he wear high heels really in training and that? No. no, he didn't wear <laughs> high heels. Honestly, always brilliant. Was he, aye? Nah, for, for me, anyway, aye. But, I said, it's like, all work of life, like, players are no play, like, not the ones that weren't really, if the one, the ones that weren't really playing, then he was an absolute fucking cunt with him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it was, he made that obvious with him. But if you weren't playing in his team, then he looked after you. Uh-huh, to be fair, I was thingy, but I wasn't good enough. So that's <clears> why he was like that with me. Do you know what I mean? Uh, like, you were good enough. You just fucking, you were good enough. You know nah. you were. You were just. No, no, done deal, wasn't it? Though? I had a shocker. <laughs> <laughs> Do you still uh, fly and see big dumb Serbia? Or not? No. 
Was it you doing that? <laughs> was it him? I don't know. What about him, by the way? Uh, you were tight with him, weren't you? Yeah, very tight. <laughs> <laughs> he nearly battered me, Nicky. Really. Oh, remember that for touching his gloves? <laughs> oh, touched his gloves. I heard that story. He pinned him up, again. didn't he? Walked in the change room and he had like, Nicky like that. Nicky's like, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. He'd like, proper <laughs> Nicky's a wee shite back, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Ever had the chance of moving to a foreign country during your playing career? I fancied it, Paul. McGowan? No, I got a, a phone call. Even though you like Polish? <laughs> 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 you got a phone call for you. Go to Kazakhstan. Oh, I remember oh, that. I, remember I, was, that. Uh-huh. I was. I went earlier. I drank God, I did. With Mike Stanley, remember? I was Kazakhstan. Was that Kazakhstan? I was in Turkey, mm. the training camp, but Kazakhstan was the team. The team, right? The Kazakhstan team. Ah, I went there. I should have been there. They were offering you crazy, though, weren't they? I was like, ah, I thought it was a wind up. And then, obviously, I was still an hour yet to go with my contract. And they're like, can you be in Marbella a certain day? And I'm like, ah, it's, just, it's not right, but I just left it at that. And he's like, how did how did they know me? He's like, the or I think the team had just come up or something like that. And he's like, they want to sign you. That's how I thought it was a wind up. Mm. And they said, look, they could offer this, and it was crazy. Remember, I told you, I was like, ah, but the reason you never went over is because they never had the weather spins over there. Said they been for seven. So. So you, you were Kazakhstan? I said that was a bit of the st- big Stanley story. Have you heard the Stanley story? No. Mate, no enough people have heard that. I think you should tell it again. When you told it, it the last time, it was only on, mm. a, like, it was only on the headphones. It wasn't on the camera. I should I keep it back <clears throat> for a hydro? Because it's, uh, the reason I say that is Stanley could come. All oh, right. Kev, okay, right. what about you ever? Chance to I was at Kamalik. Uh... Oh, you said that German team, wasn't it? No, it wasn't. It. I thought you said Kaiser's life's in a Aye, that was back in was Sunday in the early days. Uh-huh. Was that Kamalnik? Uh, I got a phone call for a Russian team asking to go and play for a, a trial, whatever else. So I said to Jimmy Calder, well, look, Jimmy, I'm contracts up there in the season. I've got a German team, no, a German team, a, a Russian team offering me 25 grand a month tax free. I says, I, I, I need to go. And he's like, <clears> right, okay, send me a word so we can back. He says, we'll let you go in trial. So I, went, I spent a week away in, where did I go? I went to um, Antalya in Turkey and met up with the team. Yeah. Uh, trained with him for three, four days and then played a match with him on a Saturday and then the manager was like, um, no, we, we would like to sign you. So I went away back to Kilmarnock with an injury. Fucking Jimmy Calder was raging because I ended up missing like four or five games with a groin injury. But I had this offer to go to uh, a Russian team. There were three others from Moscow. <coughs> uh, Nef, 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 de, Nef, G something. Nef, G Baku or something, I can't remember what it was. Or Inter Nef, G. And I was like, that to Lynn, fucking 25 grand a month, tax free, man, fucking got to go. I says, even only there for a year, take my money, but we had it up and I thought, no, nah, I've got my, my oldest son lived in Sunderland at the we'd time. Up, I thought, we'd what up yourself? <laughs> the tools. <laughs> and uh, I just thought, no, nah, I just thought, no, nah, money wasn't, uh, I was never driven by money. And I just thought that, nah, I can't do this. You I wish you went now to, be honest. Oh, fucking right, I do, yeah. I. But, it should be amazing, I know. And then I sat with Mo That's Johnson. Amazing, I sat with Mo Johnson in the, an office in Glasgow in Corkin Street. Um, Tried to thrash out a deal to sign with Toronto. Was it Toronto he was at? Toronto. Aye, Raptors. so me and Mo Johnson, aye. Is it? Toronto, I went to him as well. Aye. You did, aye? Uh, but was it good? A court case came up. Oh, <laughs> you did <didn't laughs> <go>? That was my concern <laughs> at the time. I don't know if I'd have got into the country, but that was another one. Uh, Mo Johnson and it was... They were often kind of similar money to what Hearts were, so I, I chose hit them uh, Hearts over Toronto, but I think it would have been a, a, an unbelievable experience. And then I had a chance to go to San Jose Earthquakes in America under Adrian... But they were scared you'd cause an earthquake. I, well, aye, that's why, that's why I was there, there was a fucking big earthquake. But um, I look back now and I think I would like to uh, went for the experience... Um, the money in Russia would have been amazing, but fucking, you imagine me, for Stran, rather, fucking sitting three years in Moscow in a wee village, what chance have I got? Uh-huh. I was watching Sky Sports News all day and I've not turned it on since, side because of they said we're going to bring on an expert site to talk about the coronavirus and it was fucking Don Goodman. Si. <laughs> I have never fucking heard that like in my life, Sai. Straight off. Don Goodman life, he's suicide. He couldn't hear it. His signal was absolutely shite. Couldn't hear what Don Goodman was saying. How's he an expert on coronavirus, site? And then they got another expert and before that, I wasn't going to say Craig it, but... Stay... <laughs> <laughs> Hi, that's enough. That's enough. <laughs> He's actually flipped the virus, isn't he? Flipped the virus <laughs> on a journalist, and it's all changed. <laughs> Maybe he's the guy we need to get in. By the way, see if that bastard. There's no no beats, no beats. See the bastard. Um, Hokim Lowe doesn't wash his horn sign this time. I'm warning you. That smelly bastard's probably spread that air everywhere. <laughs> need to get an army to smash that bastard's horn. Brilliant. See, just on America, girls, you need to get your side of the America story. What one? <laughs> me, and, me and you last day, last night out. Yeah. What? 
if you look at Matt, that was a shambles for us. Mate, what were you thinking, man? Oh. What were you doing? Bad. You wanted to tell it? Sure, you have said this before. Uh, was that a pre season trip? Uh-huh. Ah, you've said that. It the was me like. Uh, me and him lost. He was nearly fighting with Bruni. I <laughs> hit him night sponsor in the face with a bit of pizza. You hit who, mate? Night sponsor? Uh huh. Did you get it there, mate? Just smart pepperoni. But was he acting up? Was the sponsor acting up? Nah, we were. We were rusty, man. Right? Everybody would. Uh, I put that you, you that always happens yeah. the night suit and all that. I phoned Bruni the next morning and I was like, I apologise. He's like, don't worry about it, pal. It's fine. Like, uh-huh. I think yeah, you knew. Yeah. I like, had. But what did you need? What did Lenny make you do, remember? I remember we walked in, he got breakfast, me and him. He phoned me. I was sharing the room with Charlie McGrew. You phoned me to go down for right, breakfast and John Clark done word of warning. I'd go and apologise to the coaching staff and me and him, but what the fuck? Never even After heard sunk. Mate, uh, I ripped, I ripped Tomo's <coughs> Prada shirt fighting him in we the, up, the we lobby hall. Remember we're up to Tomo's, Tomo's room? <laughs> we chapped the door and he's like, what is it? I'm doing a shit. <laughs> <laughs> me and him are standing at the door knocking. We'll see you after. And then obviously did we got to Lenny's door, I think we did now. No, we yeah. did that kangaroo court. So remember, um, I had to wear a mankini. What, for the full day? No, to dinner. Yeah, to I'm dinner. Top hotel, man, I'm sitting on a bit of a mankini. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, brilliant, man. For being aggressive, ring me. So we got a charge read out, and that's what I had to do. It was either a £500 fine or wear a mankini. And then in the back corner, Fortune. Mark, remember him? Mark Anton. Anton, Anton yeah. Fortune. But see, he wasn't even out in the night out. Grasped you. Uh, he's like, uh, Gowser, about Gowser, um, Lenny done that. Stand up, Marco. And I was like, he wasn't even out. He's like, uh, in the lift, very aggressive with me. <laughs> <laughs> Grassing so, bastard, man. So I must have been in the lift trying to start with Marco. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, fuck me. But that, that's magic. a good side of Lenny. Like, he knows but, that you're yeah, young, boys. Yeah, you, you've probably went a wee bit too far. On, but... Remember, on, we were walking on the plane to, I think we were going back home. He's like, look, sit down. He's a, he's a hero on merit, don't fuck it up. He says, I'm all for one for having a, a baby and a laugh and that, but there's a line. I think me and him fucking... Oh, the line was gone, <laughs> mate. Aye, the line was crossed. <laughs> crossed. See, when you woke up that morning, did you oh, have that mate. fear? That came sure. Every, see, when I, do you know one of them when you wake up and everyone's staring at you? Oh. And they're like that. Oh, that is vile. You hate more like that, dude. I'm sure we'll tell him Joe Ledley. Joe, where are you signed here, mate? <laughs> me and him not even played a first team game. <laughs> We're, not, we're young boys, haven't even played a fart. <laughs> oh, oh dear me. Right, and Joe Ledley said to you, like, what did she make you came with? Well, you came with Mr Lenny when he walked in. <laughs> <laughs> right, girls, uh, you got to run in a team under Mowbray. You were actually flying, weren't you? Nah, I wasn't flat. I made my debut, like a home debut. Got man of the match, played well, 2-0. Everything was... Sweet. Sweet. And then we go and play St Mirren on... Uh, Tuesday and they beat us 4 0, and then that was. We'll come to that in a minute, that. but he scored against Rapid Vienna. Yeah, I scored against Rapid Vienna in the Europa League. We were 3 0 down after 30 minutes, and I'm like, I'm getting took off here. That's easy option. We get in at half time. I don't know if it was 3 1 or 3 0. It might have been 3 1. And he just said, He's a staying on. He's a getting your cell out of this. Oh, now, hold on, you got us in this shit, you'll get us out of it. Aye, he's like, I'm things. taking on today with us. <laughs> <laughs> and I end up scoring the equaliser. <clears throat> and, you know, and then after that, I never really, I was in a bit, I was always training the first team in a bit, but I never really got a look in after that. And then, I think it was St. Johnson, get the bib the Friday. Didn't even notice I was playing, it was caddy again, like, you're starting tomorrow. Went home. We cad notices every day. Oh, he is a wee sweetie wife, isn't he? Home told. Dad, mum, and then, ner- I could just remember, I still remember to this day, nervous as anything, like the night of four, when up, cause it's, son, as you, you dreamy, when you're younger, like, as a Celtic supporter, like, Celtic supporter, it's all you ever wanted to do, and then, I actually played well, never scored, got man of the match, and then, you know, I can remember after it, Robbie Keane, <coughs> come up to me, who was great for us, but I, all that was missing me, man, was a goal. Really? Yeah, I mean, eh? Things like that that probably, that obviously I'd appreciated it back then, but you look back and you're like, fuck me, man, you're mm. no bad. And he was great with the young boys, like, when he was a, he was unbelievable in what, the way he went about. What a player. What a player, you know, and, you know, it was good times. You remember your debut, Slinny? Sigh. 
me and Robbie Keane didn't get on. Right. Oh, because he's both signed the same day, didn't did, we? He slaughtered your dad's suit jacket, didn't he? Aye, so there was a lot of tension there. You know, see what uh, the fuck he came as? Aye, he said that was you meant to be when he walked in, my dad walked in, what you came as, say, what you said the first time. And uh... <laughs> 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 My debut, oh, my debut was um, 16 at Murrow, so I came on to be Hamilton. Um, Nervous? No, not at all, say. I was, I, I, say, I, say, I had much belief, say, I believe I should, if it wasn't for injuries, I would be at the very, very top of the game, say, which I'm doing in the media game, say, I've took my football ability and just said, do you know what, I can't date there now, say, because my peg legs, I will go into the media <laughs> game and say, and take care of that, which I'm up now, say, but what was I going to say, so I going to say a point there, oh, I've passed, I forgot it, Mike oh, came back to me, come back to you, what about your debut, Kev, remember? Yeah, yeah, I, obviously my, oh, game. sorry, Kev, say, say <laughs> no, sorry, <laughs> mate, I'll not no believe I say myself, right? Every family member's in the house. Every family member, like, because I've seen me say, like, and Celtic gave me the code for Celtic TV. Right. So we're all doing it, and we've got it on the telly, and everybody's watching. Tony Mowbray's done an interview, he went, I never signed Paul's line. Everybody in the house just kind of didn't hear it. People started talking early telly, you know that, because we went to fucking hell. I was telling everybody I was saying myself, but obviously it was a youth coach or whatever. And uh, when he said that, I never signed Paul's line. Can you believe it, Sai? Who did remote you, that? He turned it straight off, Sai. <laughs> and then Barry, he got really blamed for it, Sai. Because of the. the yeah, exactly, yeah. Sai. What about Sorry, yours, Kev? Uh, my debut was. Uh, my son on debut was Southampton away at the Dale. Sub? Sub. Shit, it? Absolutely. No, I, to be fair, I, I, I was enjoying the <clears> moment <throat> because it was the first time where he flew away for an away game on the Friday. Oh, he flew up? Flew up. Oh, private plane from fucking Newcastle Airport, didn't he, Southampton. Went to the big hotel and then you get into the ground and then the gaffer's fucking reading you the team out and you're like, fucking, you're on the bench and you're like, my God, man, I'm on the bench today. So I'm looking at the Southampton team I'm seeing who's on their bench. So, who, like... Thinking, who can I warm up beside? Mm -hmm. Fucking Mark Letiz, he was only on the bench for Southampton, wasn't he? So when, oh. Matt, when I seen Mark getting up, I was like, right, boys, when am I going to warm up, con? Oh. I wasn't shy, like I was fucking... Good on you, big man. I'm out and, oh, how you doing, mate? All right, mate. I was like, oh. So I was like, fucking hell, I get on the other day. And I just kept thinking, like, I didn't think of it like, as a debut. I just thought it as like, can I get this fucking appearance money and fucking yeah, that's bonus? Yeah. It's weird, eh? Because, you know, I was on like five, five fifty. I was on a week. Um... And then the call came in, Kevin, you're going on. We're winning 1 0, Kevin Coban scored. And I went on, and Peter Reid was like, right, big man, just go up there, hold the ball, be strong. He says, uh, you're playing against Big Dean Richards, fucking se season pro, the late yeah, Dean Richards. Spurs as well. Spurs eye. Right? He says, uh, and just enjoy it, really enjoy it. And Niall Quinn came off, and he was stood in the touchline at the halfway line and was like, you fucking enjoy this, you deserve this. And I was like, oh, cheers, big man. And Came oh, on and basically they we were under the course. So I was coming back defending <clears> corners, <throat> free kicks. I actually broke my nose that day. I went to header it and headbutted somebody and we won one nil. Came in and the dressing room gave me a round of applause and then that's when fucking sat beside the boys and they playing the way up and a wee drink and that and celebrating it and fucking went straight out that night because obviously I was pure proud of myself. So straight out. Into the tune, some don't think I'll go tonight and fucking wrap this up. <laughs> 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 fucking sitting there drinking some carby breezer, man, not a problem. See, when, 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 uh, when I made my debut for Celtic Side, si, I never played for Celtic Side. Si. I made one appearance, that's nothing. See, that's, that's what I say. Do you know what I mean, Side? Si? People see with me, or he, 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 he talks himself up and he loves himself, not that. I never was a Celtic player, Side. Si. If you played maybe 50 games a full season, one appearance is absolutely. Uh, listen, neither it's, it's a brilliant and insane thing, but. It's, somebody comes up to me and says, are you proud of that? No, I say, you're proud if you become a Celtic player, yeah, so yeah. not making the odd appearance, the, the odd sub-appearance, say. so, no, I, I, listen, I didn't make it as a, as a Celtic player. See, I knew was trying. I was on the bench and I was 17 against Dunfermline, I remember the 8-1 game? First time on the bench, 8-1, mate, right, I'm thinking, I'm going, I'll shoot you and I'm going on here. Lenny scored, remember yeah, it, East End Park? <clears throat> and Tommy was at me, go and get a good warm-up, I'll get you on. So Tommy's in his ear the whole time to put me on, never put us on. And then, do you remember after the game you got asked why he never put me on? And then the next day at Celtic Park, mate, you had a full meeting with all the youth team, reserves, first team. And he slaughtered me, man, for somebody asking him. Remember that? <coughs> no. And why did he slaughter you? He says, because you didn't deserve to go on. I've got everyone know, asking me why you're not going on. He didn't deserve to go on. Do like, you ever felt he hated, he hated that rule? That under 21 under 21 rule, Because yeah. he was leaving ah, yeah, good yeah. players out. And you, he weren't there to me. Let's be honest. Bench. Players weren't there to me. No. You know what I mean, they were there at a, a default. But see, when you're on the bench, mate, and Celtic never celebrated so much, seeing knowing you were getting that. Aye, the, 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 the <laughs> was your, what was your, win, what was your, uh, what was your uh, debut? Never, never played for Celtic. No, but like, oh, I was winning. I had debut. my first. I wasn't meant to be starting, mate, and then I done quite well on the Thursday and Friday. And Danny Wilson was like, he was the best guy ever. He went, I know, Danny I'm going to start you. I'm going to start you Saturday. 
It's, it's, I was it's, not. I was never that nervous at all. No, I think I was ever nervous. I was just relishing the moment of like I, I, I was excited. Like for I was talking about the money and that. See, just to pull on that strip with the fucking Premier League badge yeah, on your yeah, sleeve. That's what I was thinking. And like, keep that strip, take it home and think, fucking hell, I've got one of the, I've got my, my number, my name. I was like, what number am I, Cookie? Cookie, what, are you 34? I was like, fucking get in there. I was just buzzing, you know. Yeah. And, See, after mm. I um, came on the Ross County side, I totally seen this uh, all over him, Si. <laughs> See, on the Sunday side, I got into the training and uh, came down, looked at the door and it was the squad for the European game going away to Sweden. Slain on the European squad side. That's the best, isn't it? No, so no. you steal it for a minute. <laughs> no, 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 no. So I had to go up to Lennon's office and say to him, my passport had expired. <laughs> <laughs> and no one did lie, say. So if, if this is a true story, <clears throat> Gary Parker walked by, say, and went, you fucking clown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in fact, Lenny's in isolation, isn't it? He wants you to drop that at his doorstep. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, <laughs> Gary Parker, I'm looking at the other side, been going wild in Britain trying to find all the gems. He's going been slinging like that back. I've actually put a bit in with it, a bit more. That's the best I've seen you there, eh? But I shouldn't have shaved it so high, side, you know what I mean? Yeah, I just yeah. want to get lots of blood. That's for you and Paul with him later. <laughs> <laughs> Stay safe, young man. <laughs> okay, that's for brushing the teeth for that. <laughs> <laughs> I know where that's going after the show. Yeah, big man. Thanks very much, Sai. I'll probably get back to that in a bit of a after you. Uh, girls are just on the St. Man game and taught us through it. Is it 4 0? 4 0. See, when yeah. the final whistle went, did you think I was embarrassed? This was going to be mayhem. Uh, oh, I think it was em- massively embarrassed. What was it like when you got in the dressing room? Somber, like, just like. Sorry. Don't think MD could really believe what had happened. You know, you've just been beat 4 0 with St. Man. And Harvey Elliott for Liverpool. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Do you Harvey, yeah. Harvey Elliott. All right. And then. We go back to Celtic Park and the fans were waiting on us. What? How many are we talking? About a hundred. What were Waiting, just shouting, Mowbray out. Gain every player that got off the bus, abuse. You get it? Did you get a bit? Nah, I know yeah. much. I mean, uh, it was more, more the manager, more than anything. And I was like, oh, fuck me, man, this is... It went from there to there in the space of three days. And, you know... Guys, I couldn't believe, see, when I came in and, and was training with the first team when I first came in, it was if they were defeated, sir. Thanks, sir. It was if they were defeated, eh? Uh, I think they kind of gave, gave See, up a bit. Nobody, it was just like so, like him, I think it was Peter Grant. And, I think uh, there were too many boys. Like, it was like, that like Grant, that like this show, to, you Grant, <laughs> saying one, and then you. Yeah, that was but strange, to be fair, I got them brilliant with them, man. They were, no, they were brilliant guys, yeah. but it just, just, it seemed, it, it seemed. Uh, so, did you have much dealings with Mowbray? Not at all, sir. He refused to speak to me. Don't know if somebody gave him a bit of hard time for me coming in. I don't know because that's why he said it. Say so I never signed him. So it's strange why he would have said that. Do you know oh, what I mean? Come and say that. Yeah. So I don't know if somebody maybe gave him a hard time. So who signed know. you? McCart. Chris McCart. Peter Lawyer. Was that his last? Was that, was that his last ever signing? <laughs> 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 what? See, see that team guy was there. Was it? What was it like when it was like Josh Thompson, Braffite, Rasmussen? That's I mean, that's was it? Did you? Could you tell it was in the standard? Yeah, of course. Like you look at the team now in the last three, four. Five years. Not any of the players, I don't think, would. Big Rasmussen, mate. See if I had his ability, Si. I'd have chucked it a long time ago. <laughs> I've chucked it. What am I talking about? <laughs> but Rasmussen was minging, wasn't he? But that, oh, that's Rasmussen. what I mean when the assistant manager shouting to you, the ball's not a bomb. Like, yeah. <laughs> surely you go in for feelers. <laughs> mate, I'm sure I'm that, that, I'm that, sure that actually came up to would come up to you and say, keep the ball away from me. He did, did yeah, And Resi gave it Remember, Vino come up to me, you're sitting in the bench, she's like, what do you think of Fortune? Uh, I remember that, mate. And me and Sai so looked at each other and like, ah, he's good. We're not going to sit and sort of, like, ah, he's, he's like, nah. When nah. they paid, paid the money for him. <laughs> my fucking hell. Man. Listen, what, I thought, see, when they signed Fortune, <clears throat> I thought he was some, they signed the guy, uh, Kamara as well, remember? Uh, do you know what they Kamara? Mate, I've never said this. See, when I, um, when I signed for Celtic, I get told to meet, my first day, meet at the Hilton, there was a minibus going up, and uh, I got there, and uh, remember the English guy, Sam? Uh, the, the, like, uh, liaison I was just going to go with him, say. It was this, I think I may have said Matt Sarati, yeah, Matt's motor or something, all tinted windies. Fortuny, Braffite, on the, eh, no. The man to Kamara. The man to Kamara and one other. And I was in the back with him, say. <laughs> it was the most awkward ever in my life, eh. This is Victor. No, they were speaking uh, like French, I think, say, or something like that. Do you know who won the World Cup final as well? Who, Braffite? Uh, uh, in the back of his head, remember? He was <clears> running <throat> like that and it just fucked him in the back of the nut. <laughs> 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 have you ever been in a dressing room, Kev? You think this standard's not good enough? 
Jeez, oh, that's a question. Did we get that sitting that question last uh -huh. night? I must have not read it. No, I just think in, in the later years at Sunderland, when um, when we got relegated or we were heading for relegation and all the top players were off, you're then having to pick the reserve players and the, the fringe players who really shouldn't have been getting a game and you're just like, you knew you were fucking doomed. You just knew that young players shouldn't have shouldered the blame because they are in there because they haven't got anybody else, but the ones that were more experienced are like, fucking hell man, they're trying to help us. We've got no chance. We were helping them. See, see mm -hmm. what you're saying about big clubs like going down the leagues? Right. I think it's so hard to get players that can play for their sort of clubs. See, when I was at Portsmouth, I could see the boys hiding, because it was 18,000 at Fratton Park, right? We were oh. terrible, we were in League 2, and I could see boys hiding no one in the boy. They just couldn't right. deal with that pressure of playing in front of yeah, a big crowd. Do you know what I mean? You find it, that I, I, it, it's the, it's the seeing the training, the daddy comes and the give me the fucking ball. I'll do this. I'll do that. But see the minute you take them out that environment and put them in front of a crowd where it meant something. It's like, oh, I'm not fucking quite having this ball today. He's like just pointing hands and he just body language, and you thought, <clears> this is fucking shit. This is like, and that's just what it is. That's. That's not a reflection of some fours, that's that's a reflection of quite a lot of them. Mm. They don't know how to <laughs> dig deep when, when it gets dirty. But uh, was there any in that team that you didn't like the Mowbray team? Any arseholes? Nah. I've never really spoke to him. Spoke to him? Like, you were in your own changing room, you were in the, the reserves changing room, do you know what I mean? So you never really spent much time about them. See but when you were in that training. reserve dressing room and like five boys have been set up, you've spoken about this. There's only like three years left in the resi changing no. room. <laughs> we used to Dave, no, wait, three, have you ever, I've had a session where there was three of us training with Danny McGrain. Oh, and what, all we done was, one of us stood at the 18 yard line, he stood over in, in a triangle. We just kicked the ball in there, uh, catch it. <laughs> gotcha. I was like, Danny, what the fuck is this? Yeah, <laughs> right. We used to do cross and finish him about four years, with one ball. One we cross at the park and we wait ten minutes to get the ball back. <laughs> that for a foot of soul destroying scene, you'll get three, four bodies, you're like, it's a uh, fucking point, man. That, was, that would happen quite a lot back then, don't it? That, that is the outside when I think I couldn't believe it. I honestly like totally surprised. I, I grew up with Motherwell and all the boys with like, a family sign. I'm somebody that needs that side to express myself. And uh, went in there and I said, as a Valors and Kraken side, who were as dirty as me soon. And uh, it was very difficult side to get going. <laughs> the, the, the big man get his house raised. Right? <laughs> the Valors? <laughs> so who signed there to me? Who signed there to? Seriously. He was, invi he was inviting people back for the pub, big. Uh, is it Valors? Valors? He uh, was one? inviting people back to his house. He's just getting people doing stuff at his house. They had to rob my phone. <laughs> he was going up to the pub, having a beer at his cell, bringing them back to the flat, and they were stealing stuff at his house. You played the game, you played the game, do you remember Lenny went for me at half time the reserve game at V Sunderland or something? You I went, would have played that. Doing the bus. Aye. I get moved from right mid to up front to left mid. You remember that? Aye, I can remember playing down there. Mm -hmm. Aye, that's that story went flat, so. <laughs> But I, I can't hear. <laughs> <laughs> Lenny would even crack in his ears, so wouldn't he? Like, yeah. Remember he was a resi manager? Was mental. Oh, you tart. used to argue all the time, didn't you? You tart. Uh, but, uh, but good, but good. A good way, do you know what I mean? I, like, I was never, I'd respect for him, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like growing up, watching him, you know, supporting him when I was younger, and you hear that respect from him, but the way he, like, he spoke of fucking... Lenny loved you and Jamesy, didn't he? Yeah. That's what I was about. When he got the job, I was like, I, I wasn't, I never in a million years was I saying I'm going to play, never in a million years, but I thought I'd have been running about it more and then he pulled me and I think St Man had come in for me to get in loan he's like, I think it'd be best and I was like, what, a wee bit deflated with it. Uh -huh. Did you not say back to him, I think I could play nah, him there? No, I think, I, I was like, I mean, they're saying that was the point, do you know what mm. I mean? Like, he's already got, got that in his hand, he was just, we are getting the ships that the the club steady and you know try to for his own sake. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I think big pressure was on him as well. But I was gutting away because as Slaney said, he did take a shine to me and Jamesy. Knew as soon as he got the job, Jamesy was in straight away because mm. Jamesy was flying. Remember that pre season he absolutely roasted John O'Shea? Yeah, he was frightening, honestly. He was he never, spoke, he never spoke for two weeks. <laughs> <so> fair, <laughs> never never spoke, one. but he's just Incredible. Because we were calling him Jamesy and he said that his mates call him Jimsy. <laughs> and that's why he hadn't spoke because we kept calling him Jamesy. But you knew Lenny loved him, man. Uh -huh. <clears throat> right, talking to history, this man was uh, man of the match in the cup final for St. Man 2013. Are you guys alright? Is that a highlight of your but, career? Nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> no. Nah. What was See, the highlight? Playing for. Celtic. For, for make my debut there. I could understand. I know people that. shot black. 
he won a car, but it was a massive achievement what we done with St Man. But then getting back to that, Gordon Stratton was on the panel. I played all right. He picked a, <laughs> he picked the man in my No more than a lie, you know. He's a wee bit nosy, isn't he? Every no, manager loves him. I know, man. mate. And I was like, ah, you know yourself and you play well and I done done all right, but I never I wasn't a man in match and then obviously finished <laughs> Stratton was getting, getting the award it and Did you see Stratton after the game? No. No. What never. did you do what did you do that made him feel sorry for you twice? I don't know, I just think he's <laughs> He, he looked at me and he said, I feel sorry for this wee guy. <laughs> <laughs> that's a fucking but that was a, a great occasion. He phoned you the other day, didn't he, Stratton? <clears throat> seeing if he wanted his old job back. <laughs> 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 oh, in fact, do you remember the guy who used to work with Stratton? We were there. He was asking for you. Well, yeah. Pearson. <laughs> remember him? No. He was like the liaison officer that as well. The, that, was the, that was the boy. He was, he was still here when I came, but he ended up leaving. Leaving him. Well, Pearson. I got a <laughs> Willie Pearson. Oh God, man! Who was the boy you got? You actually, you board. actually text me that. Aye, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, you still you t- <laughs> Willie still Pearson. Got you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually think I've agreed with you. Said I. Ah, bro. What was? Uh, uh, how did you celebrate that? Was it night in Paisley? Aye. Oh. We. It was actually very good. We get the bus, open top bus, through and. Streets were packed. I'm like, ah, where does everybody work? Streets were packed. And I was like, ah, after it, like, where are you every week, man? Come <laughs> to Bond, fucking, <laughs> we can push you on. Like, <laughs> honestly, there's thousands out in the street and it was incredible. Went back to a hotel, free drink, free booze, and partied on the Monday. So we ended up, ah, you're too dear. See, if you won the league in the cup and asked you to do a parade of Paisley and have a night oh. in Paisley. When you turn up, say, yeah, just sitting there. I think I get to go away celebrate elsewhere. So I, I, I couldn't sit down myself with that mob. So I, uh, <laughs> that paisley. I don't even mean to see anything. I, I get I, I, no <laughs> word to lie. I think I get chucked to the right glass. How bad? <laughs> <laughs> what? So, uh, what's Stephen Thompson like? Because uh, so many people oh, on here said, man. "Good luck." Oh, great. Is he a madman or not? Yeah. Uh, but pre-season trip as well. Like he'd get the guitar out. To one of the pre-season trips we done it was like a, a stag do man. And he'd get the guitar out, singing away, cans, just great guy. And, you know, he'd he done very well for us, considering, you know, he was at the latter stage of his career. And him, Gary Teal, had great careers, come up, one last get a uh, team for him. And, nah, he was brilliant, but what a guy as well. Mm. What do you think Don Goodman's doing now? <laughs> Googling you the corona. Searching he? coronavirus. Yeah, Googling ah, the corona. Yes. <laughs> He's still got the afro, huh? Oh, mate, he's looking horrific, eh? Here, who was your um, manager at St Mirren? Danny Lennon. Me, Danny. Oh. <laughs> Would you go to that island with him? 24 hours. <laughs> Did you see that comment he said? No. He'd love to take boys out of an island with him. We've done some crazy shit. We have touched a board and shouted, I believe. That's <laughs> what <laughs> 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 they It was like a board and it this. I can't remember what it said on, right? So we thought he's arse on the board. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was his wallet. <laughs> so he was big into positive mindset. Positive right? mindsets and you know, every you'd get a text a Thursday night. You'd take in and see us called Stephen. It's big, can unite a boy man. He'd get in his arch sitting there. Got to talk to him, tell him what you're thinking, and I'd be like, ah, I'm not happy with training. No, everything's confidential. I'm not happy with this And then see, we're warming up. You see Stephen toddling over and telling the manager everything that's been said in there. And then did Danny pull you up for what you said? Nah, because I, I was his boy again, yeah, probably. <laughs> and, but getting back to that, it was a board. I can't remember what it was saying. So we'd all take up, touch and shout, I believe. Oh, man, so we did. That. Did you do that? Shows in that one, you know, just to see how you did that. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> you, you said, did you use, uh, was it? Charlie oh, McDermott with the, the geese. That's the best story oh, I've ever no, heard. The, that, that was Kev. Harold Wilkinson. Obviously, I, I took a bit of stick for telling that story because... That's the best ever. Apparently, Sir Alex used that story as I well. It's all right doing it when you're at Man United. Aye, I know. We were just fucking sat around like you're talking Kev Phillips. Guys that are on 40 grand a week. Big big 30 goals. European boot winners sitting around a fucking table and he's got a video up with the fucking geese. I'm going to show you guys today the best fucking team in the world. I'm like, all right, okay. <laughs> the next thing is fucking flock of geese come up in a V-shape and I'm like... <laughs> No the day, Howard, no the day. She's look at them. One drops out of formation, the other one comes in, swoops in. What's that got to do with If Alex has done it, what's that got to do with football? Hell, man, you're sitting there. We, like, we had the things up on the wall as well, but we had the fixtures up. 
the last 10 games Aye. and he had like what we thought we could have won oh mate what about when managers do that oh he had like we had like Leeds at home win three points so he actually <laughs> accumulated enough points but we're going to stay up so every Monday we come in and we're like rip that down <laughs> <laughs> rip that down <laughs> lost L L L L L L what Fucking. was the man Kev with the, with the geese it was a bit at the end it was amazing Oh, it's when the uh, was it the, the assistant manager? Aye, aye. He got up in the fucking the master of bed after we did the chat. He says, "So see this Saturday, guys, we get on the fucking pitch, right? And I have only three words to say to you: grind this one out." <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think, Fuck, that's forwards, man. It's just <laughs> that was that. Uh, was that, that was nostrils. What was he called? Fucking the biggest nostrils in the world. Uh, Steve Cottero. Oh, Cottero, uh, he's a pure Bristol guy, isn't he? Uh, Bristol or bumming. Uh, 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 Grind uh, this one out. Like, oh, <laughs> mate, see, see managers doing that. We, we, you were at Swindon, we got relegated that year. It was like eight games to go, so we'd won about two games a year, mate. And the manager done that, and he had us winning like six out of the eight games. And somebody put their hand up and went, Gaffer, if we win them, we'll win the fucking league. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't have won a game all year, man. I had this one in six eight. Man. We'd be doing that with Neil McCann. Where do you think we're to point where we thought we should finish in the league? So I'm like, looking at it, and I'm like, oh, oh, he's pointing the third. That's what he got. But that was just his mindset. He's like, right, but you couldn't go in a worry, but I had to fucking take your head off. So we were sitting there looking at third. Third, I swear to God, look, just like that with a stinker. So we did. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Uh, do you like Danny Lennon too? Ah, he has got I, some, he's, he's good, but he's, he's got some strange. He's weird, different, but isn't I mean, he? You need to buy into it. You need to buy into it. He's training, like, do you know, it was kind of slow. and But listen, he done well for St. Mirren. Mm, great record at St. Mirren. Great record, and I think it was harsh for the club. They were, the owners were selling up. Wanted rid of him, that's how they get rid of me as well. They get rid of a few is. So, nah, he's alright. Ask him about that, man. Aye, tell us how good a player John McGinn is. No, how good was he then? Mm. How good was he for St Mirren? Because we had a, do we know who somebody on, sorry, we know somebody on recently that thought he was alright? He was quite raw. Aye. No, he, he was, he was massive. Like, St Mirren, he was coming through, he was <clears throat> massively raw. Did I see him growing? Was he rawer than know. his ass? <laughs> Red Rock. <laughs> you wouldn't have you would have some then to where he is now. I don't know, no, I, I don't know. I think that's Would you have said you saw a lot of John McGinn's through your years of playing at different Celtic. clubs? Yeah, probably. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. There's only one every ten actually going and make it to the fucking because he's yeah, like he like a good like player. But then going playing against like he's he's been unbelievable. Oh. Like seeing him he's, the strength he had that when he was at St Mirren just Never done a weight of that in his life. Oh, just, just natural. Natural strength, but he's done it un unbelievable for the three again. They're all lovely boys. And for him, where he's came from. They all still share a room as well, don't they? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Posters up in the row. <laughs> but they're all lovely Kevin boys. Keegan, and isn't it? <laughs> and ah, nah, that's good. He's done it's, nah, it's he's good done to see. Terrific. He had always had a lovely left fit, though, didn't he? No, nah, he's great. He but he, his he, left he, when he made his debut, he came in, he tried 60 yarders. And know what impressed me about him? It not let's like, say trying six sixty yarders, shanked four in him. I'm sitting ham. I'm oh, like I'll like, hammer him, hammer him. Get it again, boom again. No care. Right. Doesn't care. Who's, who's, who's the player? Like to succeed. Who's the player you've hammered most in your career? Who, I know who it is. <laughs> can't make care. Can't make it. Oh my god. <laughs> you can't. Who <laughs> just? Can't can make Dundee. Me used to. Can't make. What a guy. You know, Lovely boy. He loves Dundee. Me and Dad, me and Dan a day like terrorised him for the last three, four years. One of the best stories. <laughs> so we're getting a pee test and I'm last to get into the toilet to go and get to the doctors. I don't know why we were getting a pee test. So I'm sitting doing a pee. <clears throat> Unbeknown to me, Daz has said to Cammy, fall up the apple juice and get Gowser. <clears throat> so I walked out. Walked out the door and all the boys are like looking at that swat and Cammy's like tripped and all our men are like, you fucker man done that bum, fuck up a piss in his face. <laughs> <laughs> and all the, the changing room just absolutely erupted and he's ran away in the toilet in the shower. <laughs> he ran away in the shower like that fucking. Big Daz is actually going out in video because Daz was videoing oh, me getting it. Oh, it's amazing. That's, that's one of the best things, man. Fucking, so I, I had, 
obviously I thought he'd done me. I didn't. I was like, yeah, because I'd always doing him, man. I was like, yeah, he, he got on my jumper and I just boom. <laughs> that's genius. See, and see, I thought the dehydrated as well. Wait, <laughs> so what are you exactly. doing with these gloves? I don't know. I was just trying to know. It's a very tight side. Are you want to do my challenge? We're just at the last few bit. I'm near the end. You want to do it's my challenge? It's hard to do a challenge, but no. it because of the We've virus. Got to keep the I'm absolutely sure. I'm a fucking sweat. <laughs> 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 uh, just a wee bit about Dundee. Me and your time together at Dundee. It was, that was a great oh, dressing room, wasn't it? Brilliant. Was it was six, top six first year. Do you know who I liked, mate? Didn't they give, <clears> didn't they care less? Didn't they give a fuck? Scott Bain. No. Bainey was funny, mate. Was he, aye? Remember, we used to come in every morning, mate, and the, the laptop would be set up on a big screen. Remember Benny put up a big, changed the no, background. Aye. What was it to? I can't even sound like, a big hat. Shove it, aye. But do you know how he fell out with Dundee? We were uh -huh. playing again. McCann was like, I always pass out for the back. Benny kind of, man get cut out, and he shouted out to McCann, fuck off. Neil McCann come in, you no know Neil, he's a hothead man, he's like, what did you say to me? When we were getting beat 2-0, what did you say to me? And Benny's like, I told you to fuck off. Steady just lying, uh -huh. saying, no, no, but Neil McCann's like, he's like, you what? He's like, I told you to fuck off. We are all just sitting there, he's like, you fucking told me to fuck off. <laughs> like, right in his face, man. <laughs> Benny just sitting there. Benny didn't care, though, eh? Didn't care, man. I'm like, oh, fuck me, and he's like, to... Go and tell, I can't remember who the sub goal is, go and tell him to warm up, but he never put him on and after that, it was just a mess, he left him out <clears throat> and that was, it's actually probably been the what best thing that up. ever happened right. to Benny in all honesty. Who else so. was good now? Barra was good, Barra was fine. Barra, funny. We had a good day. That top six, I don't think that really gets spoke about what we've done. Top six, like, I nearly made an arse, I remember I passed the ball to Michael yeah. Allen. And considering it was a whole new team, and Played some good today that new mate, it's fucking... Seasons have been a slog, do you know mm. what I mean? It's, you know, I don't think it's, it was looked on an achievement back then when no, we done it, no. do you know what I mean? Nothing really gets spoke about it, they all speak about the... Greg Stewart was brilliant, wasn't he? Aye, Greg He used to make me every day in training, eh? Different class. Was amazing, amazing, aye. Uh -huh. Brilliant. Was Kevin Thompson in or not? Oh, mm -hmm. what what baby, what a team that is. Then you, Jazz, it's me, him, Jazz, Tomo. Jeebsy. Jeebsy. Greg. Greg, Kano. Paul McGinn, I mean, Wally Dyer, good, good fucking team, team uh -huh. do you know what I mean? So, nah, it's what, been a great what, time. What about when I got you message X with the oh, Hartley? <laughs> I told that, <laughs> I told that, I told that, I told that. Ah, what did he say to you when you actually went, no, how did, in, how did he, the he, convo the, go down? The table was full with wee jams, a lot of people, were, he was in talking about something, and I was like, ah, you want me gaffer? And he's looking at me, he's like, no. Nah. I was like, you've just texted me. <laughs> I'm showing him my text, he's like, guys, I, I don't want you. I was like, Gaffer, you've just texted me. He's like, Gowser, fuck off, son. <laughs> <laughs> I walked out, walked out, and they're all sitting there pissing. I was like, that's fuck me, man. That's amazing. Fucking that dangerous thing, that, by the way. That was that me, message. Man. was dangerous. Last wee bit on Neil McCann, because, mate, when I watch this, though, some of the football you played is brilliant. Do you know what? I thought of a classroom so much. Like, he's a hothead, but some of the football we did play, we just couldn't score. Mm. See, we had a, a proper striker that would have scored goals. You know, we'd have done well. And fair play to him, he stuck by. He thought even we're getting beat weak him, he's like, nah, still playing, still playing, still playing. And, you know, ended probably a wee bit premature for him, but, you know. You ever offer you a square go? No, but I let him down massively because him and Daz had an argument. It fell out. Daz was the captain. He stripped Daz of the captain, say, pulled me in, says, right, I'm making you the captain. Blah, blah, blah. And I felt a bit un it doesn't really mean nothing to me, do you know what I mean? A captain's a captain. You no, know, I went in and seen Daz, right, away. I said, Daz, he's just offered me that captain, say, I says, I'm no comfy. My mate's like, aye, it's all right, and whatever, just leave it. <coughs> then, go and play, play the year awards. I done well, I think I'd get 10 or 11 awards that night end up fighting somebody in the nightclub, got lifted, and then he pulls me in, like, what have you fucking done to me? He's like, bang, he said off the fucking table, he said, I put you captain, so you went and let me down massively, he's like, fuck off at my, at my hangar, and that was really <laughs> hit, and we got on after that, do you know what I mean, we'd always respected each other, and the way he went about his business, but, you know, fair play to him, like, he's, he, the way he got his playing some of the footballs, you know, was uh, very good. What would you do if somebody stripped you the captaincy? Thank you, Si. 
Thank, thank them so much. <laughs> I, I, before I went in, I, I said to him, I said, look, just take it off me, I'm no bother. I said, I've let you down. Uh-huh. But he's like, ah, he was like, ah, he said, <laughs> nah, you could tell he'd been yeah. up all night. Like just, yeah. He's the nicest well, guy I ever come across on the TV yeah. and like we him. speak to him, but yeah. when I hear all these stories about him being a madman, I'm like, fucking, Mate, he, he, I can't even he, he went, I never went, I was in getting treatment. He, the boys had a golf day, right? And the boys were meant to be drinking. He's went with assistant manager to the, the pub that we were on drinking, fucking offering boys telling them to get him. And the boys are like, no. And you could see him getting angry or what he, that's how like him and Daz kind of spark because Daz like no we're a team bonding you said we can eat a drink it was big Stephen Colker fucking fucked it for us the night of four <laughs> over the you first I mean? time he's fucked that's it that's what somebody. I mean he fucked it for us the night of four and then he's like no drinking big Colker had like a fucking fire alarm off in the Hilton the night of four <laughs> fucking <laughs> Was so, Cocker brilliant gives it? Oh, Sorry unbelievable. No, unbelievable player. Uh-huh. Was he? Aye? Oh, he was, was he at Liverpool? Liverpool. Uh, Liverpool. Was wow. Liverpool? <laughs> I actually texted a chat about a week ago, no heard from him for about eight months, just like, how's the boys doing? Like, he, must have, he must have been on one, man. <laughs> <laughs> but great guy. Could he have he's, played for a, a Celtic uh, Rangers? Easy. I think he said, he was he open book, he said that Rogers fell out with him. Don't know how trash he's coming for Steve. Like, Roger was raging with him because Roger's like, ah, look, give you a three year deal, come to set on the phone to him saying, look, I'll take you to Celtic, such and such. But what he was getting here wasn't he making for a year that he was on it? Uh, QPR. Oh, QPR, sorry. <laughs> Dundee. Dundee. QPR. <laughs> <laughs> Dundee. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't he. That's crazy, isn't it? For a year that he was at QPR, He's making he mere. was making more. So, and he told, he, Told Brendan, he's like, nah, I'm not saying I think Brendan was supposedly fuming with him. Right, we've got a challenge. I think it's dangerous side on it with the. Oh, with the corona. Just in case. Aye. Aye. Can he? Oh, nightmare. Anything else to talk about? That was that was. Brilliant. That was good. That was very good. That was magic, mate, wasn't it? It was, aye. It's good to keep the keep the keep the topics going because people are obviously sitting at home side. I do think we must need to get say a, the, a, an outing and a where's Hokim Law is. We must find this man and get him in quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> he's a, he's a, Gilza, thanks for coming on. Thanks for coming on, mate. What a guy. Lads, thanks as well. Cheers, Si. Good enough, you, mate.